Welcome back to ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Cambodia tourist bans alarming dog meat trade. A Cambodian province popular with tourists has banned the trade and slaughtering of dogs for meat. According to Animal Welfare Group, for Pose, Siem Reap visited by more than 2 million tourists annually. We think up to 3 million dogs every year fall victim to the, the dog meat trade in Cambodia. Um, and an unknown number also are trafficked into Vietnam as well. Um, and so the, the majority of the consumption is in the capital city of Phnom Penh, where we know that there's over 110 restaurants that just serve dog meat alone. In Siem Reap, there's you know, between 20 and 25 restaurants. We see the, the demographic that most commonly eats dog meat are younger men or middle-aged men. And oftentimes it's when they get their salary and they go out with their friends. And it's almost always accompanied by drinking, by drinking hard alcohol, right? So it's almost like a, a bar snack um, of sorts. So it's a huge step because we really see this to be a pilot for other cities in Cambodia, right? It, it makes sense for Siem Reap to take this step because again, they are, have such an incredible tourism reputation. Uh, and you know, what a better, what a great message to send that we care about animals as well, right? So we hope that it serves as a model for Cambodia. The tuk-tuk drivers said that the government bans sale of the dog meat and they support a government decision and they accept any decision made by the government. I think if the government banned the selling of dog meat, it is a good thing. But I'm worried about the sellers because it hurts nowadays to do other business. I support the provincial authorities' decision. I cannot oppose the government decision. I accept any decision made by them. The director of provincial agriculture, forestry and fisheries department said demand was driven by foreigners, especially South Koreans, who are among the most frequent visitors. The ban says the dogs should not be slaughtered because they are loyal pets capable of protecting homes and farms and of assisting the military. Despite numerous campaigns against it, the eating and trading of dog meat still takes place in some parts of Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia and Thailand, even though canines are loved as family pets. Movie and theater fans from around Thailand are donning masks and taking care to social distance to come to Bangkok to bid a final farewell to the La Scala Theater. The iconic theater built in the 1970s in the late modernism architectural style with an art deco interior has been struggling for the last decade to stay profitable amid competition from new media. The coronavirus pandemic and all the social restrictions it has brought final blow to the theater located in the heart of Bangkok. Scala was built by my father. He was determined to make it as beautiful as possible. This is what he truly wanted and it is still very beautiful today. I have regrets and I'm so sad. I have no words. It is heartbreaking. The movie fan and theater fans say that when they hear the theater is closing, it was surprises because the theater holds memories and it is luxurious and more comfortable. When I heard the news that the theater is closing, I was surprised and felt a sense of loss. The theater holds memories, so I came back again to bid farewell to it. Watching movies in this theater is luxurious and more comfortable. The others in the shopping malls are much more smaller, but theaters like this are all gone now. The finale films this weekend include Italian movies and Thai documentaries and 3,000 tickets has been sold to fans who want to see Scala. Nantes expects a high rise will replace her theater. File footage of Singapore's opposition parties ahead of general election. The opposition parties will face off against the ruling People's Action Party in Singapore's upcoming general election. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong People's Action Party, which has won every election since Singapore's independence in 1965, 
he never since its vote share dropped below 60% is expected to win comfortably. The Workers' Party will fight for you, the future of Singapore, and our fellow Singaporeans in Parliament. Your vote on polling day is crucial. Make your vote count. Vote for the Workers' Party. The new Progress Singapore Party, led by former People's Action Party lawmaker and presidential candidate Tan Chen Bok, can cause an upset in the few seats and he wing backing from the Prime Minister's strange brother, Lee Hsien Yang. I told them never lose sight of these basics and very fundamental thing, which I enjoyed working in my days, in the early days as a PAP MP under Lee Kuan Yew. So those value systems are, I, care, I, I, I still hold. Well, we may be very tough in the early days, but the people trust us because they know we do everything for the country. That is so important. So what I'm bringing now is the values that I have inherited from the old guards to this present, the, to the, the, to, to this present politics. Okay. The election is seen as a limit test for the Singapore's new generation of leaders, with Lee Hsien Loong, a son of the city-state's founding father. Lee has said that the coronavirus situation in the city-state, which has recorded some of Asia's highest infection rates, fueled by outbreaks in migrant workers' dormitories, has stabilized and he was satisfied an election could be held safely. Gay rights as the taboo subject in Singapore's election. Victor Ong goes to the polls to cast his vote in Singapore's general election, says, he will not be able to choose a candidate that will help to advocate basic human rights for him and his husband on one of the conservative city-states more controversial issues about gay rights. We, we, we can't really express ourselves publicly or uh, we can't have public uh, display of affection. Right. <laughs> we can't, can't hold hands really. It could be surreptitiously when there's no one around. We hold hands and walk down yeah. an alley. Um, Ong's marriage is not recognized in Singapore, meaning the couple are not eligible for some benefits like housing and tax. They also say they avoid public displays of affection due to the worries about social norms shaped by the 377A law. And it's also quite telling, um, my extended family, where we, we have like WhatsApp group and we're on each other's Facebook. When it's someone's wedding anniversary, we all chime in, happy anniversary, but we are married. When is our anniversary? Silence. So we are not acknowledged on the same common level. Why can't we be just another boring couple in the family? Singapore's Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong has previously called the law an uneasy compromise as society is not that liberal on these matters. There is no mention of gay rights or 377A in the manifesto of his People's Action Party which have ruled Singapore since its independence in 1965. It's a non-topic with, with the parties, the choices we have. Uh, as much as I want want to uh, make my decision based on their stance on that, that isn't any material to work with, to, to consider. But all the more so, we are citizens who are voting. We are LGBT citizens and we are still citizens. We are sons and daughters of Singapore, whether we are gay or straight. I think just the fact that they have to articulate that, oh, it's okay, we don't enforce it, that in itself amplifies it further as it's something bad that we have to excuse. And that um, kind of translates to how, in a broad sweeping brush stroke, it's okay, they are, we, we are so bad, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are the bigger person, let's, let's not bother the gays. Um, like we are, we are bad news to them. We would not object to a repeal of Section 377A if it is only to remove the criminal punishment. Uh, if you remove the criminal punishment, we will not object to the repeal. But, but the debate over the current, the current, but currently the debate over Section 377A is not just about criminal punishment. What we are worried about is it has become a proxy combat zone uh, for other issues to be taken into the debate. What are the issues? the sanctity of traditional family structures, all right, marriages, parenthood, and gender identities. We are worried that they make use of 377A to bring in all these issues. Eh? The four main parties contesting only the New Progress Singapore Party responded to a request for comment. 
Progress Singapore Party candidate Ang Yong Guang says it did not object to removing criminal punishment for homosexuals, but says the debate over 377A was a proxy combat zone for other issues like family structures and marriage. Political analyst Lo Ko Yong said the issue are considered political suicide for parties, who felt they will be punished by either conservative or more liberal voters. For any uh, political party, opposition or um, PAP, to have a stance on this um, issue is considered generally as political suicide. If a if, um, rights group were to want to advance its agenda, it would unfortunately just have to be a, a debate within the ruling party, the PAP, because they really control the agenda. They control the seats in parliament. Uh, they have a super majority. Um, it's really a debate um, for the ruling party within themselves, I'm afraid. Advocacy groups do sense a growing awareness around the issue, especially after India repealed a similar law in 2018. Nearly seven countries around the world criminalize gay sex, mainly in Africa and the Middle East. Dolce Hanoi Golden Lake Hotel gills itself to attract visitors amid pandemic. A five-star hotel in Vietnam's capital Hanoi, a gilded has launched with a luxury twist that it hopes will attract guests. The hotel, which is owned by Vietnam's Hoa Binh Group and managed by US-based Wyndham Hotels and Resorts Inc. Dolce Hanoi Golden Lake Hotel hopes to lure guests as Vietnam's tourism sector slowly reopens after closing during the coronavirus pandemic. At the moment, there is no other hotel like this in the world, in which the outer walls are covered in gold-plated bricks. The interior of the building includes bathroom with gilded sink and toilets. So this is the most spectacular, unique and lavish hotel in the world. Luong Van Tuan, hotel guest, says the hotel room that was covered in gold, he feels something very different. The first time I step into the hotel room that was covered in gold, even the bathroom, I feel something very different. It has changed my mind because other luxury hotels usually use marble as tiles. But here everything is gold plated down to the washing basin. I feel this is at a completely different level. According to Duong, the hotel was completed in just 18 months. A stay at the 5-star, 342-room hotel comes at a price of at least $250 per night. He adds, it was not for the pandemic, the hotel should have been fully booked by international guests. He said the hotel is a part of a tribute he continues to pay to his army comrades who died in the Vietnam War. I wanted to do something to pay tribute to my fellow soldiers that died in the war when they were only 18 or 20 years old. The rice was never enough, so it was mixed with anything edible. And even so, they never had a belly-filled meal. So many were killed, and they never had a good meal in their entire lives. That is what wars are like. Therefore, I do whatever I could to make our country become better, to repay my debt to my comrades. Duong is also planning gold-plated projects in Ho Chi Minh City and a resort in central Vietnam. After three months of lockdown, people dressed traditional clothes held prayers to reopen tourist places in Bali. Indonesia's holiday and Hindu island Bali are resume mass prayers for the first time in months as it slowly prepared to welcome back tourists. People dressed in traditional clothes and bearing offerings gather at the Besaki temple, with many wearing masks and washing hands to help minimize the spread of coronavirus. More than a thousand attend the ritual to thank the gods for handling the COVID-19 pandemic and invoking blessings for the new normal life in Bali. Bali's provincial secretary Dewamade Indra said tourism will be reopened gradually in three phases, starting with welcoming domestic tourists leading up to September when Bali hopes to open its doors to international tourist arrivals. Jadi kita buka kembali aktivitas ini karena memang harus dibuka. Mau berapa lama masyarakat akan And so we restarted having this activity because we had to. How long will we have to be in lockdown? We had to resume it, but it involves a potential risk as with all our efforts as normal human beings, this protocol is considered as one of the efforts. We still have to have faith in God. Yes, it is partially on us to be vigilant. Why the tourism is opening up? Of course we need to resume living our lives and tourism is part of our life, part of our economy and it has to resume. <laughs> Yeah, kan? bertahap. Bertahapnya itu apa? Mulai dari domestik. 
The tourist from the Netherlands, Robin Tesla, says he hoped the best for Bali, therefore all the tourists will come to Bali. What I hope is the best for Bali and that COVID will go soon away and that all the tourists come to Bali and that everybody will be happy and healthy again. I wish the best for Bali. In the same time, a Bali tourism industry says today is a good day to start something, to opening of tourism, and they prepare better thing after they open for international tourists. Uh, hari ini adalah hari baik untuk memulai sesuatu. Ya, kebetulan bertepatan dengan purnama. Today is a good day to start something, coincidentally coinciding with the full moon. As planned by the governor, there will be a gradual opening of the tourism, namely stages 1, 2 and 3. Now we are using the momentum to prepare things even better for later in the third stage when we open for the international tourist. Tahap ketiga itu adalah pada saat kita membuka untuk internasional. Itu kurang lebih di bulan September. The health ministry spokesman said Indonesia have more than 1,400 new infections, bringing the total number to more than 62,000 and that 53 more deaths had been reported, bringing the total to more than 3,000. Bali now has more than 1,700 total confirmed cases with more than 900 recovered patients and 18 deaths due to the virus. File footage of Singapore's Deputy Prime Minister Heng Shui Kiat. Singapore Finance Minister Heng Sui Kiat will face the daunting task of reshaping a struggling economy. He becomes the wealthy city-state's next leader. Heng was promoted in April 2019 to the Putin Prime Minister, putting him first in line to take over as leader from Li Xiong Lung, who has been in power since 2004. He is a formal central bank governor and policeman that he is not a member of the Li family, one of whom has ruled Singapore in 40 of the 54 years since independence in 1965. Heng will probably take over as a Singapore faces of a series of challenges, such as rising protectionism and rapidly aging population, and a need to reshape its economy to focus on technology rather than trade. He also has a master's degree in economics from Cambridge University. He holds a master in public administration from Harvard University. After leaving university, Heng joined the Singapore police force rising through the ranks to assistant commissioner. He then held various public service positions, such as Chief Executive Officer of Singapore's Trade Development Board. Singapore will hold general elections after its Prime Ministers opted to go ahead with a vote that opposition parties and rights groups have criticized as opportunistic and unsafe because of the coronavirus pandemic. Singaporeans eat out queue for bubble tea as virus restrictions loosened. Singaporeans had breakfast at neighborhood restaurant, shopped and queued for the bubble tea as the city-state loosened restrictions aimed at curbing the spread of the new coronavirus. Retire Sebastian Sia says he felt relaxed after finally being able to sit down and sip a morning coffee at his favorite hawker center before meeting old friends. Well, to get the coffee again, I, I, I feel very relaxed because I've missed the sitting out for some time, maybe two months now. So by relax sitting down, I can enjoy the better drink. A few dozen shoppers queued up at flagship stores for luxury brands such as Rolex and Gucci just before opening in Singapore's upscale Orchard Road shopping district. Um, yeah, definitely liberated and I'm really glad I can see my friends again, but um, you know, obviously we all got to be careful and make sure that a coronavirus phase 2 doesn't happen, so a little bit scared there. The circuit breaker is being phased out in stages, loosening of restrictions is officially regarded as phase 2. Phase 1 saw the resumption of the schools and many government departments, gyms, parks and beaches are allowed to reopen, but religious congregations, bars, theatres and large scale events will not be allowed to resume activities. Singapore's total COVID-19 infections have topped 41,000, one of the Asia's highest tallies. Thailand's main airport installs coronavirus lab ahead of international travel restart. Thailand's main Suvarnabhumi Airport near Bangkok showed off coronavirus screening measures for arriving passengers as it prepared to welcome limited groups of international travelers amid the country's slowdown in coronavirus cases. Our fast track group of passengers are separated into two groups. The first one is diplomats, government guests and representatives from foreign countries who have a clear itinerary and short stay. Then the other group is business travelers. 
ที่เข้ามาในระยะเวลาที่ Among the measures, the airport has created a virus lab capable of providing results within about two hours. The must provide a specific itinerary to authorities and hire medical staff to accompany them on their trip in the country. The country is slowly opening up with these two groups. Soon, we will use the same test procedures with tourists. The virus has killed 58 people in Thailand among 3,100 infections. Iconic Japanese back on the road in Philippine capital after three months of lockdown. The Philippines iconic and notoriously packed and polluting Japanese were back on the road in the capital's thoroughfares for the first time after the coronavirus pandemic. Plastic barriers have been installed inside the Japanese to promote social distancing between passengers. Drivers must wear gloves and face masks at all times, and only commuters wearing face masks are allowed to travel. Japanese were the last mode of public transportation to resume operations, prompting some drivers to seek aim or start living in their Japanese due to months without the income. I'm very happy that we are now back on the road. This is our only source of income. Our everyday expenses and children's school fees depend on our jobs as drivers. Alejandra Carable says without Japanese is very difficult to them because they only have alternative to take a taxi or tricycle which is cost 100 pesos one way. Our expenses are too much without Japanese. Our only alternative is taking a taxi or tricycle which costs us 100 pesos one way when going to the grocery. We can save much more now that the Japanese are back. According to the Philippine government, over 60,000 out of an estimated 55,000 Japanese will be initially allowed to operate at 50% capacity on certain roads around the capital after operations were suspended for over three months. Manila remains under a general community quarantine, meaning business and public transport are allowed to operate at a reduced capacity. So far, Philippines has recorded total more than 38,000 coronavirus cases with more than 1,200 deaths. Well, thank you for today. We'll see you again.